Hello guys and welcome to the Tulsa Regional uh, for Netrunner. This is in 2015 and it's the first round of the Top Cut. I'm Steven. And I'm Zach. Hello, Zach. Hello. Hi. Uh, we got Ben on the left, which you guys will recognize from Peach Hack fame, I guess you could say. And uh, Sasha Friedman on the right. The shovel. Is a classic uh, kind of competitor here in the region and always finds his way into these top cuts. So there's something to be said about that. We have Haley on the left, uh, Ben really being the only one who brings Haley into the top cut of this tournament, and Sasha with Engineering the Future, and he's playing a Breaker Bay Grid variant of this deck. Very, very strong, hugely uh, about economic exchanges and those kinds of things. So keep your eyes open on how good this economy gets up and running. Uh, if it does start to hit, we will notice it immediately because those credit totals will go insane. On the other end, we have Ben, try not Haley. This is kind of the first uh, proven ground for that ID. And it is now a pretty well-tested and well-respected bit of uh, card there. I was going to say, it doesn't doesn't seem like he's trying it out so much as showing people how it's showing done. Showing people how it's done. First click is gain a credit. Mm. Second click is install Opus and then trigger Haley to install a cloak. And now we have two more clicks to gain four. So Magnum Opus doing work here. Opus is by far one of my favorite cards in the entire game. It's incredible. And right now, I'll tell you, the the biggest counter to replicating perfection is Vamp. Uh, being able to take them to zero so that you can go get their Caprice and not have to worry about winning those side games. So I'm curious if Ben's actually running a copy or two of that. In here, I know we see it in kit decks a lot as well, but anytime I see Opus, it's very tempting to throw a Vamp or two into that deck. Uh, especially right now, the meta is absolutely ripe for that card. Yeah, I mean, basically, you can just gain money for days, right? Yeah, and then you just you can gain money, gain money. Mm -hmm. Steal it up and then go hit that remote and don't worry about a thing anymore because your troubles are over. It's, there's not much you can do as a corp where you don't have money. There are no more really, unknowns. You can't penalize them. Yeah. Yet. Ben takes an initial click to look at private contracts here. Looks like that may be his third click there as we can see from his beautiful click tracking device. And gain two more. And he gains two more. Sees the private contracts there, a card that was not up to this point really all that great. But now that Breaker Bay Grid can bring it in for free, uh, it gets a lot better. Those clicks are monumentally more uh, impressive. Private contracts. I remember that card dropped and we all had to really learn how Netrunner math worked. <laughs> Netrunner math. Well, if I paid this much and then I would have clicked for credits instead of clicking contracts, how much money would I actually make? And it's like, well, Not about two much. credits, but it's a little faster. There goes a little ice on top of private contracts, so the chance of trashing that for a reasonable price is really over. And if there is a reasonable price uh, to trash private contracts, I don't really know what it is because it isn't five. That is just too high. It's really not what you want to be doing you just, with your credits. You Although Magnum Opus makes that not as bad. See, with these big things like EVE and private contracts, you're often tempted to let the corp spend the money to res it and then go get it. Uh, obviously, icing it changes that math, and then on top of that, Breaker Bay, Bay Grid changes that math. So, uh, you know, just HB getting some new tricks, some new ways to get their economy online in a, a more, I guess, a better trade, ultimately, for them. How are you feeling about HB? Uh, see, making it making it this far. I was I ran into Sasha in the tournament. Not played him, but I ran into him literally, and not literally. I guess. <laughs> he, not guys, literally. And I was surprised said. to see HB at all. I hadn't heard much conversation going on about it. And I guess it's the the grid that's made it more. I guess. And there economical. it is. This is what we're talking about. So res the grid for nothing, and then immediately res Eve or uh, private contracts for free. So it makes that math way better. I mean, you can see how in impressive this is, and uh, especially on Eve campaign, you, you get in a situation where Eve campaign comes online for free and then ticks off 16 credits over the course of a game. There's no way to compete with that economically. It's such a problem. So, um, I mean, I think the thing about HB, especially engineering the future, uh, you're, you're pretty much always going to see one in the top cut. It's just... <laughs> it's just that solid. It's like a... It's an artificial intelligence kind of situation. It's a... It's a very streamlined, very great fundamentals deck. Uh, a lot of players love it. A lot of players grew up playing HB. We see Haley's ability trigger there on a clone ship and boxy play. And he modded, nice. he modded it in there. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of cards coming in for no clicks. Uh, but yeah, HB always finds a way in the top cut. The difficulty for an HB Engineering the Future deck is can it go the distance? And I think we've seen consistently that it can make the top cut, but we we see it struggle when it when it comes time to really uh, make it through all these rounds. So maybe it's a case of it gets you there. It's the 90% deck, but it can't quite go 100%. 
Maybe it's just a matter of random chance on the day, or uh, maybe it's just that good players know how to play against this kind of style. It's not throwing any real tricks at you. So you kind of know where everything is and how everything's going all at once uh, if you played against this. And we've we've been playing against these kinds of decks for three years now. Forever. So Since the beginning. Yeah, it's not a real surprise kind of situation anymore. Which is why it's honestly not surprising to see it in the cut, just because it is so solid and so consistent. But at the same time, it's so solid and so consistent for so long that most players know how to play against it. So you run up against a good player, and it's going to be a tough match. Yeah, man. Look at this. Uh, look at this combination coming down. Corroder, Refractor, just boom, run out of hand. Got a Ghost Runner online that really brings uh, Refractor into certainly break all the ice territory. It won't last for long, but I'm sure we'll see uh, some lock picks or something coming up soon. And then Sasha, on the other hand, really just has been establishing economy, and oh, hasn't he? 23 credits. It's just almost insurmountable and just stuffs out a project Vitruvius for yeah, biotic at the a little bit of money. And once Cost you seven. That's part of it with HB2. Once they have the money because of biotic labor, uh, the only thing to stop them is to deny them the money. I mean, the clock is on. You're looking at R&D lock, or you can try to go in HQ if you think agendas are stacked. But uh, Sasha will also establish a remote server down the line here. He's going to be done with his private contract soon. He may throw it there. He may save his break bay grid for a new campaign and then start a new remote. Uh, but yeah, he's not exactly into fast advancing everything out here. He's ready to build a server. And when you look at 17 credits, he's got Ash down in that server. A lot of times he'll have Caprice as well. And that's just a lot to get through if you want to score an agenda. So a double threat out of this HB deck, it kind of puts a little bit of quick pressure on like a fast advance NEH, but it also can stabilize for the mid to long game. I think that's why a lot of players really enjoy the engineering the future uh, play style. It hits you from both angles. And it's really a low variance kind of deck. It does the same kind of thing, yeah. the same kind of way every time. Well, and I think it's just you're running a decent magnitude of ice in the deck. Yeah. You know, some decks are a little more spotty, especially in the age, on the ice that they're running, but they just have really good ice. Yeah, it's very, very solid. All right, so we have a uh, install of the old feedback filter. I'm sorry, it's just going to trash it. Feedback filter, Crescentus, a nice little piece of tech here out of Haley. I like these kind of lower cost uh, influence programs to throw out on top of your normal breaker suite. You can see that Ben on a 2-1 Corroder Refractor play is three credits to get your two breakers into play and really just looking for speed here and I like how quick and light this rig is getting set up. Sasha now puts the pressure on here. We have a new remote server with what I can only think is an agenda and an Ash or a Caprice and Ben's now going to have to see if he can make it. I have to imagine that maybe a sentry could even be an architect over there. Sasha's feeling frisky trying to put the pressure on to get this sentry breaker online. And I would absolutely take a uh, take a trigger here off that, even to hit an Ash or a Caprice, and then Just probably not even steal the agenda. Yeah. But Ben's going to have to choose. The other part here, too, is you see Haley building up and Sasha not really having to res any ice. So he's still just sitting on all of his money. Yeah, it's about to come to a head here. There's going to be some, some serious wizardry happening. Uh, it's, the only problem here is the, the lack of Sentry Breaker. It's always a, a bit of an issue going against HB since Architect came out. And even at a certain point, you have to honor like the Roto Turret, the random Roto Turret that really shouldn't exist in the meta, but still occasionally does. It'll get you. It'll get you. And then, and then you got to worry about the Ichi. So you got to keep your clicks available, um, keep keep your options open. And this could be a problem. See, so like an Ichi right here is a bit a bit troubling. It's not terrible, but while well, static, so we see a wall of static, and that's really fascinating to me because obviously Sasha knows he can get through that. Yeah. And ouch. There you, that's why. That's ouch. It's basically just uh, just some some nonsense down there. Uh, Donna's campaign that you now more or less have to trash. You cannot abide it being up now that you're in the server. And uh, Ben, I imagine, is going to trash this thing. And then the question is, do you do you trash the grid, given that the Sasha already has one online, that he can put whatever assets he wants onto, and Ben decides to go ahead and trash it. Yeah, that's a tough. It's a tough call. I think reality is at some point you really need to get it all off the board. You just you got to clear it out, but at the same time, you know, you're sitting on a couple credits going to 5 now against 15. Like these kind of trades are not the kind that you're in a position to be making. Yeah. And I mean, Sasha definitely has a tempo here, right? He's already scored an agenda. Ben took a little time to set up. So, I'm excited to see if Sasha can keep pushing the pace. Yeah, we're going to see another uh another asset go down here. Hedge fund comes in, and uh, we see like that, just a five credit turn. Sasha putting this thing behind the wall of static and basically letting it fly. 
And I mean, the, this could be an agenda. He's the kind of guy that, that sometimes agenda, would throw right? a rando agenda down. But I mean, it looks a lot like an asset. I mean, he gains the credit from the install. And, and you know, Ben can get in there. It's, it's like, and, and Ben's it's, got it's been to honor to this. spend the click and the money to get in and trash like another four or five cost trash thing. Yeah, this is th- th- this is where these kinds of plays actually are are doable, right? I would never want to do this in Swiss, but when you're looking at this kind of a match where it's the top eight, these are competitors who understand the game at a very fundamental level. Ben knows the worst play in the world is putting an agenda there behind that wall of static. But that might make it the best play. Exactly, and that's why Sasha can potentially get away with it. Now, I don't think Sasha's the kind of guy who would ever Oof. actually do it. Hits the architect. That is, you see the sigh out of Ben. That's kind of the worst case scenario. You expect that architect over on R&D. Uh, this is a very kind of a rare play, I think, out of HB most of the time. You like to hit the architect going into an R&D access so you can make sure that they hit make nothing sure but clean. trash. Yeah. Would, uh, that, would that make you think there's another architect in front of deck? It, it does make me very suspicious. Um, and there is Chrysinus. And he's paying one for Chrysinus. That puts him on 6 MU. And let me see, there's got to be something happening. He can trigger Haley, so maybe put his emergency SMC in. Okay, so has to bring the Chrysinus out to clear enough so that there's enough memory. Clears out the for the SMC, pops wow. it. This is a this is a dance of a play right here. Yeah, this was. I'm trying to think what he's going to get something to break the uh, architect. Yeah, that's that's fair. He's going to get the dagger. Pay one for plus five. Pay one for break off of the stealth credits. Yep. I'm not. I know there's absolutely a reason that he brought that. Crescentus in. Oh yeah, so we could pull the SMC out of hand. Yeah, yeah. Those are wild plays, and these are the cool kinds of plays you can do with Haley. I'm actually pretty amped to see that. That's super cool. So dagger breaks. All right. 50-50 if there's an agenda in there. Yeah, access a card. It looks like a decent shot at there being one, and there Got it is. It. Got the Cronus project. That's nice. That's actually really good for Haley, given those clone chips, especially you got a Chrysinus and now an SMC in the trash can. I think Sasha could easily have uh, used that tried agenda. To, tried to score that one out next turn, even yeah. biotic it out. All right, looks like it was an Adonis. He it was, was an Adonis, yeah, paying the hard way. Asking him to come get it. And yeah, that's, that's where it's like, if you let that architect trigger, he can just put a grid back. It's really tempting for me here to try to work off this private contract so I can free up that Breaker Bay grid for my, my next asset. Uh, I really like that. I, I would like for that thing to get cleared out a little bit, but I think Sasha can be looking to ice up probably at least HQ here a little bit more. He could even put one over the top of the Breaker Base server. Just keep it a little safer. I know he's got plenty of ice, but he did only have two cards in hand last turn, so he may have to draw up here too. There he goes. And he's drawn. Gonna right. take some cash. Private Contracts continues to uh, pay back, and man, just just paying zero to res that thing up and then getting basically plus one credit every time you click for credits on top of the install credit for Engineering the Future. This is just a big old money deck. Big old money. It just gives you bad trades. Yep, and you can see, I mean, even with Opus on the board, we have 17 credits to three in HP's yeah. favor. Like, yeah, it's nuts. That's I mean, not how Opus is supposed to roll. Ben's been spending a lot of time setting up, and it's ultimately, I think, working in his favor. This thing is going to start to shift because Sasha has not been able to capitalize on this early game. Ben has basically given him, I mean, look at how much money he's spent on the board that he's not been spending breaking ice. So Sasha has had a bit of an opportunity to uh, to move some agendas out. He's only gotten one out, and I don't know if that's enough. So going to mod it in HQ interface, going to cost him one, and then immediately follow it with a replicator. Yep. I feel like that's something you want to see a bit yeah, earlier. He'll be able to trigger those, because Haley's ability is whenever you install, he can trigger those passives in whatever order he wants. So he can go get that replicator. I believe he can go get that HQ interface. I don't know that he's going to, but he may only have one. I would probably only have one. Yeah, I mean, HQ interface, especially out of criminal, is something that is questionable out of non-criminal you mean yeah, out of shaver when you're running yeah yeah you're... this is a, i mean haley decks are going to take a while to become optimized i think ultimately right because like you want a little bit of of hardware and you want to deal with kind of using that ability steals Nailed another it. vitruvius interface run a great play here that is that is exactly what you should be looking to do and ben really just making his accesses count just doing a great job and and as we were talking about just the hardware 
in Shaper, you probably run one and it's kind of your HQ multi-access threat and it works really well as being hardware in Haley as opposed to maybe a legwork uh, just because you can use that ability and, and get the benefit of her ID and you saw it there, a replicator maybe not the coolest thing to flop down after an HQ interface but it could have been like interface in a clone ship now I can bust something in to get in that server those kinds of plays that are really good and Haley uh, I think will continue to be at the top of the shaper pyramid her and Kate uh, running things and those female shapers man just killing it yep just the best looks like Shasha did clear off the contracts there and now that grid is open and I could easily see an Eve campaign coming into play here Sasha really has the money at this point, and he will continue to have the money, and he needs to start pumping agendas out of this. He's some, prob he may be looking for his Caprice, his Ash. We need some both. points here, Shovel. Need a few points. Need some points. And notice Ben is fully set up. The only thing that's limiting him right now is the access to stealth credits. we got Jackson Howard on the board now. That's going to that's gonna help tremendously Definitely. here for Sasha. Definitely a killer play here for Sasha. He needs those cards right now. And uh, throws another one on top of the grid there. Building the server. Playing some long, arduous Netrunner here. This is some, some classic Netrunner. And cleaning up the credits there. Look at that. Looks like he's cleaning up the cards here, too. Yeah. Very clean all around. 28 credits to his name. Four on the other side of the board. And we're going to have to... Uh... Oh, there's the silencer. And into a lockpick. A brilliant, brilliant, wonderful thing. We see Stealth now coming in. And going to replicate him. Mm. And Brutality. Oh, man. Oh, man. Now, he's, now he doesn't even need money anymore. I he's love just got, it. He's just got Stealth credits for days. Oh, it's so good. Man, I'll tell you. This at, thing is set up, Zach. When I play against Stealth credits, at some point, they have so many cards on the board that... I you honestly, just don't know how much it costs, yeah. Yeah, it's just like, well, if you can get in, just tell me how much. This is great. This looks absolutely great for Ben. I don't know how Sasha's going to get out of here. Because, I mean, we're like an R&D interface away from more or less R&D lock for the rest of the game. I I just don't know how he's going to keep him out. This rig is so efficient now. And we, we can just keep installing lockpicks, silencers. Ghost Runner's not bad either. No, it's not. We can start to kind of piece together Ben's influence on this deck. Silencer accounting for a good chunk of it. Three influence, a pop. All right, run in the hands. You're gonna see HQ for free. You may as well. There's an Eli. And there's a Quandry. Quandry really not doing much against that refractor. Eli's still putting in a lot of work here though. And Sasha probably waiting for the right server for that that piece of ice to go on. Could be R and D. I would be tempted to uh, throw it on R and D there given that I don't see the black cat stealth thing happening in this game, although, man, it's really it's really not bad. I'm telling you, I got the, I'm working on that blog about black cat. It's so good. <laughs> it's a thing. It's a it's a thing. I won't say it's so good, but it's it's not bad. It's really interesting to see. So like in the early game, it's it's possible for Sasha to potentially with ice keep out Ben, and I think eventually this Haley deck just really can't be stopped. There's not a server strong enough. So that makes that to me makes cards like Caprice uh, super interesting, or Ash, where That's it's just like the only way like to balance out if you get to a very late game against a runner is by having some way of of just denying them the access. Mm -hmm. And this is, I mean, this is why Corps are playing to those cards. They're playing to Ash. They're playing to Red Herrings, and especially they're playing to Caprice. Because sometimes you just can't course. stop them. I mean, we're we're done with the days, and, and we may never have ever been there of. Actually, keeping the runner out by gear checking them, basically, by saying, oh, you don't have a barrier breaker? Well, I'll just put the ice here and score an agenda out. There's so many tricks now. There's fems running around. There's inside jobs. There's all there's, of this kind so of many tricks and ways parasites, to get the clone trick. ships, yeah. SMCs. I mean, the whole thing, especially against Shaper, they can have any breaker they want at any time. So it's really about taxing them out with money. So, like, can you keep them out economically, make them spend a ton of cash on a server that goes nowhere? And that's possible, but now with Ben, the rig that he's set up here, it's all recurring and it's all solid. Yep. So he's just going to be able to run to his heart's content, and the only thing that costs him really any money is, is that piece of ice right there. Is that ice right there. Yeah, yeah I think that's it. What well, you can also, I don't know, you really it's a money game at this point. Yep. This both, still, both directions. I mean, it still costs four, you know, to get through an Eli, which is a bummer. It's a disaster, really. <laughs> it's why Corroder, I mean, you, you want Lady to be in here, but I think Ben is setting up some kind of a more permanent rig. And maybe he's got Lady in the deck. I don't know. 
But Lady actually kind of running Eli, not running off in the sense of not showing up anymore, but... Oh, man, and then followed it up with followed Bastion. Followed up with Bastion, man. Sasha playing some interesting pieces of ice here. You don't see these guys a lot, these Wallace Statics and Bastions. But he's just looking to tax, and I think he's really looking to tax Lady counters, too. That's a really good uh, way to do it, you know, whenever you have a Shaper Breaker that uses power counters, four only, and it's like one on Eli, one on Bastion, it's halfway done just yeah. to get through that server. So does Sasha have the goods here? Or is he just... He's, He's going to continue around. to have the goods. Uh, uh, ooh, man. Install advance advance. That's massive. And that could Ooh. be a three-point. It also could be an NAPD. It could have been baiting Ben to spend all his cash to get down there, see an NAPD, and whiff on it. Uh, or it could have been a three-pointer sitting down there. He could also be overscoring Vitruvius. He could also be setting up a beta test play so that he can install Jackson and then trigger the beta test. There's all sorts of great things you can do with these uh, HP agendas. We do know that Sasha's running three-pointers, though, so... It's so it's a very, wild world up in here. Very interesting. You know, you stick it down there even un unadvanced because it's actually safer than HQ given that he's got HQ interface and he just blows through that architect. So it may have been just a way to keep it safe. Probably has a Caprice or an Ash there. And uh, counting on that to keep Ben out. Yeah, I mean, when you know you have Eli and Bastion sitting there and how much money it's going to take Ben to get there, uh, whether that's an Ash or a Caprice, which I think is one of the two. Yep. Trash is Jackson. That's the right move in this instance for sure. you got to get Jackson off the board in case that is a beta test. That's a problem. That's a problem. It's a three-pointer. All right. Sasha here. Scores the, the Eden fragment. Now goes to five points, and this is the difference in your standard HB fast advance decks, the way they've been constructed. This is a deck with three-pointers in, and that changes things significantly. We're one agenda away now, and a biotic for that agenda away from the game yeah. being over. So huge pressure on Ben here. He's got to not only get into HQ and make sure there's no agendas in there, he's got to also hit the top of R&D. So I don't know if he's going to have enough time to do all this stuff. The time and the money to do it is a problem. And, I mean, the thing is, too, even if Ben gets a three-pointer... And he, he passes it right over The here. game's not over yet. So because the differential here is five to three, it's really a tight spot for Ben. Yeah. He can't allow anything through... He certainly can't let Sasha have a three point or a two pointer with a three advancement cost. I mean, right now he basically like he seeded the the game to archive memories there to biotic labor and agenda. Like, this is a real problem. He's and this, this is a fundamental that, issue that Sasha doesn't have it right now is a really welcome thing for Ben. He spent all of his last turn gaining money. It's essentially like playing a day job. You know, you just sacrifice the turn, and he's saying, "I hope you don't have one of these these cards." Yeah, so I can just. Because in this situation, you have to have enough money to put pressure on across several turns. Yes. So Ben has to have money. And the fact that Sasha couldn't just nail it in right then, real good. Yeah. Good for now, Ben. Now he's he's probably looking at, like, you know, play uh, Sure Gamble Maker's Eye, kind of a Haley favorite there, um, or even a Maker's Eye Stim Hack, heaven forbid, if he wants to go check out that remote. There's a lot of really cool plays that Haley opens up, so we'll see. I'm sorry, it's install only. That's Comet, whenever Comet's out. And he's not running Comet, you'll notice. He's running Boxy, which is fascinating. Yeah. So Comet turns on the event spin. So I'm used to seeing that out of Haley. Ben's doing a much more setup, kind of stealth rig thing here. Which so is maybe not a lot of tricks out of him. But it is, it's super intimidating. I mean, you've got four stealth credits that are disposable on those Ghost Runners. And you know he has another... Two recurring and two in hand. And it'll cost him one click to install them. Yeah. Love it. This is it's a good, good deck. All right, we're back to Sasha. He's installing. This is probably, I mean, this is a tremendous amount of pressure. If that's a Caprice or an Ash with an agenda. Yeah, ooh, it installs maybe another both. And, and honestly, I think Sasha is the kind of player here who's both willing to risk the two-pointer if Ben can get through all this nonsense and also willing to bluff complete nothingness down there. Ash, Caprice, uh and on a Adonis or something, you know? I mean, even if it is a two-pointer, you're opening up a huge window for yourself, even if Ben scores it. Yes, exactly. Because he's going to have to spend a turn and most of his money to get in and get past whatever is there, right? It's Whether absolutely it's natural right. Increase. So once that yeah. happens, now you have a two- or three-turn window to get it and the buyout. Like, you have so many outs yeah. at that point. Yeah, this, this Sasha just played this exceptionally well. And, like, you, you have to do, like, I think you have to get to that before you allow him to just maker's eye and see the the top of your deck. I mean, that's 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 kind of the, when I'm looking at this game, you know, what happened already, it's like R&D has not been touched. 
Uh, so that's been a really interesting for shapers, you know, to leave R&D alone. Yeah. Sasha's gotten basically the flow of cards that he wants. Ben spent a lot of time setting up. He's now set up, and it's like, can you bring the goods? And this is kind of one of the issues with uh, these kinds of decks is that you have a deck like Sasha's is on 28 money, you know, and in turn five, and it has Ash and Caprice to immediately start scoring stuff out. Yeah, and Biotic. And Biotic, yeah. So even if you get set up pretty quick, it's like, can you then get enough money to Oh, uh, man, and another Eli. Eli. That's, That's exact, a exactly server. what you want. Yeah, exactly what you want. And Ben could potentially click through this guy. Which he, Sasha's totally a fine way. Yeah, and you know, it's like, you know that's Caprice down there. You know it's Caprice. It's coming up for free. Ash comes up, Breaker Baker doing work. It's a problem. Yeah. It is a problem. This is a, a very tough Actually, situation. Breaker Bay's only going to be for assets. So I'm, I'm even wondering if that's like an Eve down there. That's just the kind of Sasha play I've come to expect. Man, if, if you blow your turn and all your money on that, that would be horrible. And beautiful. Yeah, and beautiful. But there's really no reason. It may as well be a two-pointer. Yeah. Because you don't really care. Either way, it's a fine trade. Yeah. And just a barrier stack. Where's that Morningstar? Are there any APDs in the stack? I don't know that. I don't think so. I think the cuts here are NAPDs for three-pointers, basically. Gotcha. I was going to say, NAPD here would be brutal as well. You, you pay all this money and get in, and then it's like you get through Asher Caprice, and then it's like, oh, yeah. you don't have four left. That's cute. I think you cut three NAPDs for two three-pointers in this version. All right, of it looks the deck. like Ben was just face-checking there. Yeah, so he just face-checks. And he's this This could be the game if it's a 3-2. A yeah, it gets some money and then uh, installs Ooh. two R&D interfaces. Off of one click. Yep. Is this a glory run right here? I I think it must be. Yeah. He's going to get the other one. Guys, to get another. Which is which is a fair fair play. Absolutely, it's if the, a fair play. If the game's play. on the line on, in one server over there for Sasha, take he, your chance. At he, least make Sasha spend the money to res that server. That's you could easily just go over there and see, you know, a couple of two pointers or a three and a two. And I was playing against Sasha in the Swiss uh, second round during this tournament. And it was an intense game. He, it was this kind of a situation where he had it set up. There was nothing I could do about it. And uh, I was on four points. So I hit HQ, and I at least had a 25% chance of hitting the three-pointer that he had in hand. So these agendas are always kind of hiding, you know. And if Ben can find them in R&D, it's just as good as if he'd found them six turns early. Yeah, and I think this play, too, is, uh, let's say that Sasha did try to trick you, and he's not going to score out of that server. Ooh. There's Architect, doesn't matter. Getting to see the top cards of deck is worth this. Yes, absolutely. If the game's yeah. going to continue, getting to see. Because it could also be like a one-pointer. Yeah. We've already seen a one-pointer. And this is where, uh, if Sasha was bluffing, ultimately, there's a toll booth. Big, big toll booth. He should be able to get through it with Refractor pretty easily. Uh, one to get it to five strength, and then one to break. All right. All right. He's getting in. Leave it. No points. Score a oh, priority, priority wreck. wreck. And we're one point away. Leave it. Oh, no. Space. He gets to six. Does he have it? He's got He's it. He's got it. Fantastic Nicely game. done. What a game, guys. Wow. That is some classic Netrunner right really there. That's really good. We really Seven to six to see there. that. Yeah. Yeah, really, really solid. And this is how tight these decks are and player skill and everything. Whenever it gets to this point, it's like... You find yourself on the last turn, and both players have a pretty decent shot. Sasha's odds were better at that uh, at that turn, but it was basically yeah. Ben, ben has to yeah. Ben to makes win the right play lose. there and uh, and nails it. So congrats to both of these players. Thank you guys so much for watching. We got so much more coming from the regionals. We're doing a a mix of both live commentary and uh, studio commentary, and uh, we've got plenty more games coming. So stay tuned and thank you so much for uh, watching these videos.